Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Approximately 10.15 in Honolulu, 4.15 in New York. It is Wednesday, 29th day of July, 2015, and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. After the FOMC comments came out, it did very little in the market. In fact, the market has been trading within a defined and very narrow range for the better part of last night going into today. Currently, we do have gold trading roughly at 1096, 1095 current print. This is COMEX off about 40 cents on the day, the low 88, the high 1190, call it 1101. When we take a look at spot or COMEX, it is basically the same price, 1096, 1097, although this puts it up about $2 on the day. Again, the low here, 1090, the high, 10 110197 call it 1102 on the day however the same cannot be said for silver silver is actually up and up almost a full percentage point up about 13 cents on the day 1477 a high of 1490 low of 1457 currently trading at 77 and a half we'll touch on silver in a little bit so traders, there's absolutely no doubt. When we take a look at the price of gold today, we have to account for some real dollar strength re-entering the market. Now, we do have the dollar trading up almost a half a percent on the day at roughly 97.20. And in terms of how that has affected the price of gold, as I said, we have gold, let's go back to a spot which shows it at a positive $2. We have gold trading roughly $2 higher on the day, but the real picture is that gold is actually trading about $7 higher on the day and is strengthening US dollars, taking away about $5.70 of value. And therefore, we're getting this very, very modest net change, this net change of about $2. When we look at our daily chart, let's go ahead and pull that up. We are still absolutely in this tightly consolidated pattern in which we have got a really tight range. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday, especially when you look at the range that is just basically accounting for the bodies, the real bodies, meaning the relationship between the open and close. You've got your lows sitting roughly, call it uh, 95, 96, somewhere in that area. We're currently trading at 97. And when we look at the tops, those are just over 1101. Or, in other words, the trading range that we've seen today. Because when you look at this particular candle of today, you can see that the low pretty much hits the bottom of the range and the high hits the top of the range. As we talked about yesterday, typically when you have a market consolidating, it is a indicator that a, a move is about to be made, but you don't have any real sense for which way that market might break. We can see some real concrete examples in which the market is trading sideways, so to speak, after a downtrend pivots and moves up. We can also see in a defined downtrending market, the market will stair step down, but sometimes it will stair step down by having a spike down, but rather than having that kind of corrective uh, opposite wave up, it will kind of trade sideways for a little while and then fall lower and trade sideways and then fall lower. That tends to happen in a market that's extremely bullish or bearish because what's happening is you're not getting that counter wave you're not you're getting a sideways trading action when there's either short covering or long covering depending on if it's a rally or if it's a decline in the marketplace the one thing that we can say is we do have a consolidating market we also have a tightening of range when we look at the most recent tightening of range that range seems to be diminishing in other words if you look at these highs here and draw them to those highs if you look at these lows here and kind of spike them to these highs in a very subtle way we do have a, a compression triangle forming but ever so slightly you don't have major highs or major lows in this market you can't draw them from these areas because we've we're coming off of a moderate decline moderate to strong to severe 
decline. And so when you have this kind of a sell-off, again, remember this particular day, we saw the market decline the most that it has declined in a single day in the last two years. So a significant, significant day in the marketplace. Now, with the dollar getting stronger and the inability of buying to really overcome that, in other words, you've got a salmon swimming upstream and the current is strong, it's really getting nowhere to nominally higher, which is exactly what we're seeing on the day. You've got the equities markets, which have moved back into a rally mode. You've got oil that's moved up considerably today. And so those are other extraneous forces that are acting upon the market itself. That without a question of a doubt, you're going to see some, a little bit of bullish sentiment because of oil, a little bit of bearish sentiment because of equities. Still, the investment public at large is putting their money into equities in terms of safe haven. They are utilizing the dollar as a safe haven vehicle rather than utilizing gold. So traders, what can we make of the most recent comments coming out of the Fed? Well, on the surface, I have to say very little, but after reading uh, the comments that came out, really the only thing, because nobody really expected any kind of rate hike today, Everybody's expecting a potential rate hike in September. But in terms of comments, the only comment that we got was really about the labor market and that the labor market itself is getting closer to meeting specific targets or benchmarks that the Fed wants to see before beginning rate hikes. Now, I've said this on a number of occasions, even when those hikes begin, I think they're going to be very, very subtle. When I say subtle, I'm talking about quarter point. They're not gonna go ahead and raise it one or two points. They're gonna raise it a quarter point, and they'll do that periodically over time, whether it's each month, every other month. However, the Fed deems it uh, once they implement it and see how the market reacts to it, letting the market adjust to it. But at some point, you can't keep interest rates at zero forever and at some point they're going to have to raise that that's the reality and i think that the fed has a pretty good handle on it right now and it's been doing i believe a really excellent job we are not anywhere near the kind of economic turmoil that we saw in 2008 and 2009 we are certainly in a different marketplace u.s economy is on track it's doing better uh, the labor market is making some strides and some headway and as i said at some point, rates are going to get hiked. And when we look at our long-term market charts, which is this monthly chart, we looked at this yesterday, the one thing that completely continues to stand out is this tremendous and utter breakdown we got over this month, this month of July being right here. Now, granted, we are off the lows ever so slightly, but in no way do I perceive this market's going to recover. We've only got a day left, two days left or so in, the, in July. Anyways, I don't see any kind of real recovery. So we are going to close in this area. And as I said, the next, the real area we want to look at, if the market continues to drop, has got to be based upon these recent lows. I'm putting it in as straight as possible but it's going to be based on this top and this top right here comes in at around uh 1025 to 10 call it 1030 1031 in that area and that's the top that i think would provide some sort of technical support but i think that the market genuinely has the opportunity to move to that particular price point i still think there's a high probability we're headed lower although over the last couple of days what we certainly certainly have not seen is uh, any kind of a recovery in the price of gold rather we've seen a very very consolidated market now, silver, on the other hand, is attempting to stage a rally all on its own. Very, very unlike what we'll typically see in silver. Let's go ahead and kind of make these candlesticks a little bit more legible. But when we look at this, our Elliott Wave is still looking for lower pricing. We have had these two up days. We've absolutely run into some real resistance just below $15 per ounce at around $14.90 
Although we've gotten this bullish sentiment here over the last couple of days, and I think that that is in conjunction with the fact that now we have an equities market that's moving back up and there's that high industrial component for silver. When we look at some of our technical indicators, we have seen a cross on the short term, meaning 720 a day or 720 minute MACD. In fact, let's go pull that chart up. And traders, I've done just that. This is the 720 minute chart MACD when we blow that up. You can see that it had a couple of false positives over the last few days, but look at the way they are moving apart. And that's what you want to look for. Are they converging or diverging? Are they converging? Are they coming together? Or are they moving apart? They're certainly widening at this point, and that's what we're looking at. You've gotten this big spike in momentum. As I said, you have this market trading. Uh, pretty much to the upside finding support roughly at 1450 if you recall 1450 was kind of our line in the sand that's where we we're looking for the market to go to the only other thing in terms of what we're looking at let me pull up this chart to kind of give you an idea when we go to our that was a very short term chart of course simply put it was a 720 now when we go to our daily chart and this is what's made me a little reluctant to initiate any kind of short position you do have the potential for that to cross we'll blow that up in a second but more importantly when we look at the basic downward cascading channel that silver's been in we have not broken above this upper resistance area and i would need to see that for confirmation that in fact silver has gone into a bullish mode when we look at our macd absolutely you can see we're at that first part of the cross so we do have the potential makings for a rally in this market itself and based upon that I believe we have a real opportunity to see this market move up a little bit but we have not seen confirmation as of yet this has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading we will talk to you tomorrow for another daily update review bye bye